Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing great. In today's video, we're gonna have a look at all of the information that has dropped over the last week from that Pokemon Presents DLC trailer, as well as the closing ceremony sneak peek trailer at the upcoming DLCs for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. First thing I wanna talk about is the starter Pokemon that were confirmed to be coming back to the DLCs Every single starter Pokemon is now going to be catchable with that part two DLC in the Indigo disc. Now, this is the first time we've had access to catch all of the starter Pokemon in one of the main series titles, I believe since X and Y. So it's pretty big news and it's really nice to see this being confirmed with that sneak peek trailer that we got in the closing ceremony at the World Championships in Yokohama this past weekend. So you can see here the first partner Pokemon from a past titles in the core Pokemon series are appearing in spades in the terrarium housed within the blueberry academy which is the setting of the hidden treasures of area zero part two the indigo disc the terrarium is a facility that recreates a variety of biomes from the tropics to icy seas where many different pokemon live and thrive in the environment best suited to them you might even get the rare chance to see first partner pokemon as they live in the wild so confirming that they are going to be in the, the wild and you are going to be able to obtain them of course you can also battle these pokemon to try adding them to your team and you'll be able to see how the terrestrial phenomenon familiar to all of those who have played pokemon scarlet or violet looks on these old friends which is very exciting and on top of that we had a tweet out from nintendo of america in pokemon scarlet and violet part 2 the indigo disc first partner pokemon from past titles are appearing in the terrarium housed within blueberry academy clear missions given to you by the school and you'll get the chance to see these first partner pokemon as they live in the wild so kind of confirming that we are going to have missions to do from the school to unlock these pokemon available in the wild in the terrarium so i don't think when we first go into the terrarium they're going to be there accessible we're going to have missions to complete which will unlock them whether that's a mission for each individual starter pokemon if it is it's kind of a lot because that's like 24 different missions they might do that or they might do them in generation missions you know so you do a mission and it unlocks all the generation one starters then you do another mission then it unlocks generation two so on and so on until you've unlocked every single past generation starter set and you can go into the terrarium and kind of catch them in and around different areas that are available to us in those games but very exciting news and i am super excited to be able to kind of finally have the chance to go in and catch all these different pokemon in their shiny forms in different pokeballs if we want them to and just add them to the collection which is really nice which is something that we don't often get access to in pokemon games so a real big kind of plus for us especially with that part two dlc that will be dropping later this year now the first thing that i want to touch upon is that we finally have a release date for the teal mask it will be dropping on the 13th of september so a little under four weeks time from the date of recording this video we'll have access to that first part of the dlc's the teal mask where we can go to kitakami and we did get some more information in the dlc trailers about kitakami explore kitakami by orienteering during your school trip after arriving in kitakami for your school trip in the hidden treasures of area zero part one the teal mask you'll get to explore the land's rich history by participating in orienteering activity so this must be part of the storyline i'm guessing you and the other students will be tasked by traveling the land in search of signboards that depict stories from one of kitakami's oldest folk tales which is going to be involving ogapon Pheasantipity and Monkadori, which is the legendary three. Uh, as you learn more about the history of Kitakami, you may even unmask its mysteries, which is a big hint at, I think, what will be going on in Kitakami and stuff to do with the masks, of course, as well, that we've kind of heard about before. So we get a few more shots of the area, some new characters as well. Briar, Miss Briar is a teacher at the Blueberry Academy and is in charge of your school trip you'll be embarking on. She'll visit your academy in the Paldea region to meet you before setting out. Briar has an extremely indistinguishable disposition and shows a keen interest in the terrestrial phenomenon. So you can see Briar here has some very big throw to Scarlet and Violet. I do wonder if this picture here is from Violet as she's wearing a violet colored jacket and maybe in Scarlet she has a an orange colored jacket with the depictions on but as you can see from the box art of the games the logos themselves she's got all of these kind of symbols that you would see around that logo as well and of course the earrings as well that you do see on her 
they are very kind of indistinguishable to something else that got released uh, later in the trailers, specifically that Pokemon World Championships closing ceremony trailer, which we'll get on to a little bit later. So we'll probably come back to Briar, but she is one of the new characters that we got introduced to us. They'll be kind of leading the school trips from Paldea into Kitakami and then to the Blueberry Academy, where she has a little bit more of a tie to. We also got information on new ways to play in Kitakami, aim for the Ogre Austin high score. So this is like a new mini game that we got discovered in the Pokemon Presents DLC trailer. So Ogre Austing is a special event that has been passed down as a tradition in Kitakami since long ago. Your goal is to ride on your Pokemon collect berries by popping Ogre balloons and bring those berries to the berry table. As a reward, you will receive mochi that can be used to increase the base points of your Pokemon stats or even fresh start mochi, which can reset the base points of your Pokemon stats. You'll be able to try your hand at the Ogre Austin with up to three players online or via local wireless connection. Try using teamwork to take on harder difficulty levels together. For example, some players could focus on popping far away balloons while others drive off the greedy Pokemon that come after the berries you've gathered so far. If it looks like, like a little mini game that you're gonna play collecting the balloons and with every collection of the balloons, you're gonna get berries which they can then craft into mochi, which is pretty cool because you can change a little bit like bottle caps. You're gonna be able to change the base stats of your Pokemon. And the big news is the fresh start mochi, which can reset the base points of your Pokemon stats, kind of giving us a big indication that we are finally going to have access to be able to make a Pokemon's IV down to zero. So that's what I'm assuming the fresh start Moki is going to be. You're going to be able to give it to the Pokemon and it's going to take its, like say for instance, its speed IV from 31 down to zero, meaning you can actually get Trick Room Pokemon a lot easier in these games going forward. So a really nice addition to see that with the DLCs. Of course, nothing's been 100% confirmed yet with the Mochis, and just assuming that is how they're gonna work, but really cool item that we've got access to and some little features as well that we're gonna see in the Teal Mask when that does drop. Also got some information on a Pokemon Snap sort of theme going into Kitakami. Taking photos with your Pokemon just got even more fun. You get access to a new item called the Roto Stick, which is gonna let you take wider angle photos and then you can share these with players online and kind of link to that as well we got to search for pokemon to photograph in the timeless woods so timeless woods is going to be a new area in kitakami during your adventures you will encounter perrin a young woman who is visiting kitakami in hopes of encountering and photographing a certain pokemon so this is perrin here uh, there is very, very strong links to Adaman from Pokemon Legends Arceus, uh, whether or not they're related or not, but there's very similar kind of traits that both of these characters do have. But getting back to the photography aspect of this, uh, you will search for the mysterious Pokemon parents looking for in the Timeless Woods, a place where people in Kitakami rarely tread. With Perrin by your side, you'll be able to take snapshots of Pokemon in this area as you seek out the mysterious Pokemon together. What this mysterious Pokemon will be, who knows, but it might be a new Pokemon that we haven't seen yet or yet to see. There's no confirmation and I haven't heard many rumors in regards to it, but this is Perrin. Obviously there is a big emphasis on taking photos in Kitakami. So whether or not it's just a side quest role for this particular new Pokemon or if it's an old Pokemon or whatever it is. And we also get some big information or big sneak peek at the terrestrialization mechanic that we're gonna see in Kitakami. Obviously we're not in Paldea and Kitakami is a different area altogether than Paldea because it is a school trip and of course heavily suggested that it is in the northern part of Japan Kitakami because of the aesthetics of this land everything that's going on around it with the traditions with the mask festival and things like that but we did get some big hints at terrestrialization or a type of terrestrialization with Ogapon. See, the legendary Pokemon Ogapon has been discovered in its terrestrial state. So we do get this amazing imagery here of Ogapon when it does terrestrialize and its mask increases massively in size. So this is something that we can look at to say, maybe this is the new terrestrialization type with the masks, new terrestrialized 
forms with the masks and how they might link up to Trastalization in the teal mask in that DLC part one. Ogopon has recently been cited in its Trastal state. Its appearance seems to differ from that of most other Terra Pokemon. Exactly what sort of power this legendary Pokemon possesses is still unknown. And uh, yeah, I think the mask is how it Trastalizes. And we can kind of, we've seen already that there is crystals that looks like Terra crystals or in the actual mask itself. So the mask has a way of being able to help the Pokemon holding it, wearing it, terrestrialize, and they do get a new terrestrialized form. How that kind of plays into effect with the other Pokemon in Kitakami is kind of unknown, but I'm sure this storyline in the Teal Mask ties into the Blueberry Academy that then takes us back to Baldea to kind of get the answers for Area Zero because we've had a lot of hints on that throughout these last two trailers. On top of that as well, we got some brand new Pokemon revealed to us in these DLC trailers. We got the first one is Diplin, which was a Pokemon that Kieran, one of our partnering characters in the Teal Mask in Kitakami was using. Uh, Diplin is a new evolution of Applin and it will be available in the part one teal mask dlc it is going to be the candy apple pokemon grass dragon typing and it has the new ability super sweet syrup and obviously another ability gluttony there a newly discovered evolution of applin this newly discovered evolution of applin is distinct from falapple and appleton the head sticking out seems to belong to one of the two separate creatures while the tail belongs to the other both creatures help each other out from within their shared apple. Dippling caught their apples with syrup produced within their body, the layers of fragrant syrup beguile opponents. So it's got a new move in Syrup Bomb as well. That once used, it does decrease the speed stat of an opposing Pokemon for the next three turns, which is pretty cool. And it has the new ability, Super Sweet Syrup, which is, which is a brand new ability to Pokemon and will appear for the first time in the Teal Mask. When Diplin enters the battle, the scent of the syrup spreads across the battlefield, lowering the evasiveness of opposing Pokemon. It's a cool looking Pokemon. I really like it. I would love to hear what you think of this brand new Pokemon as well. I love the Applin and Falapple and Appleton kind of evolution lines. So having a third one on top of this is really cool, really nice. And wasn't something I was expecting to be revealed in these DLC trailers. And we'll be having access to that from the 13th of September when this first DLC drops. Then the Pokemon Presents trailer moves into its second phase where we go into detail about the DLC part two, which is the Indigo Disc. And we look at enter the Blueberry League and take on the Blueberry Academy's Elite Four. So confirm that there will be Elite Four in the Blueberry Academy and it will be called the BB League for the Elite Four Battles. In the Indigo Disc, the Blueberry Academy has its own Pokemon Battling League called the Blueberry League, aka the BB League, where students battle each other and climb the ranks based on their skills. The school's top four trainers are known as the BB League Elite Four and they're looked up to by the entire student body. You receive an invitation to join the Blueberry League from Drayton a member of the BB League Elite Four, you'll be able to take on the BB League Elite Four in the terrarium. Each biome is occupied by a different member of the BB League Elite Four. To battle one of the Elite Four, you must pass their Elite Trial. Each trial is different. Aim to defeat the Elite Four and become the best trainer in the Blueberry Academy. Also got some information on flying. In order to tackle the Elite Trial set by Ameris, your legendary Pokemon Coriodon and Maridon can take a supplement that will grant it power to fly. So kind of suggesting that you're not going to have any of the abilities that you had originally in Paldea. So you might not be able to climb, you might not be able to fly, you might not be able to jump high with your Rhydon Pokemon, like Rhydon and Maridon, like you can do in the Paldea region. Something must happen to suppress those abilities when you get into the Blueberry Academy, into that terrarium. And it kind of makes sense. If you could have access to everything that you could do with both your Rhydon Pokemon as soon as you get into the Blueberry Academy, into that terrarium, you're gonna be able to explore the whole place. And I'm guessing they probably want you to go on a linear kind of route through it to unlock the ride abilities that you have access to in Paldea. And then once you've unlocked them, once you've beat the Elite Four in this area, you'll be able to explore it a bit more intensely and kind of uncover all of the different Pokemon that are in these areas. At least that's how it kind of comes across from this information. It seemed the power is only temporary, but perhaps someday this hidden potential will be fully unleashed. So like I say, that's what I mean. I think you will be able to access 
access all of these ride on mechanics eventually but you'll have to do all of these trials along the way to kind of get to the elite four beat them and then become the champion of the blueberry academy after that i'm assuming you'll have access to all of the ride abilities that you had in Paldea. Maybe some new ones as well. And of course, the members of the BB League Elite Four. We've got Lacey we've met before. We've got Crispin. So the name confirmation of Crispin here enjoys cooking and red hot battles. After club activities are finished, he often puts his cooking skills to work. At the end of the other three members of the Elite Four can all enjoy a meal together. So we've got Lacey. We don't have really much information on Lacey other than what we've had before. Very uh, mysterious character, especially with those kind of hair clips that she's got with terrestrial clips crystals in there so we'll see what role she kind of plays in this whole thing and then we got Amaris who is a taciturn and keeps her cool in any situation but underneath that ironclad exterior she seems to really care about her friends so again not really much information about Amaris and then we got Drayton who was the character who invited us to attend the BB League or the Blueberry Academy Elite Four League or whatever it's called um, so that was the invitation from Drayton as well and a big call to Pokemon Black and White as well with that character there. Um, and we'll not get into detail about that now. Drayton may act like a days is cold, but he's a force to be reckoned with in battle. He doesn't seem to go to class often. Rumor has it he had to repeat a year thrice already. So a little bit of information about Drayton. We've got a bit more footage from him in the trailer as well with his signature Pokemon, which is the Arcaludon and a brand new evolution of Duraludon, which is very exciting. I do love that Pokemon. Steel Dragon type confirmed and it has the ability Stamina and Sturdy, which are crazy strong abilities for a Pokemon of this typing. And of course, it does look like a bridge. Duraludon was kind of a skyscraper, so taking inspiration from other city structures as well. In trouble, Ogludon extends its normal bent torso, trading some of its mobility for more stable center of gravity. While it's like this, this Pokemon resembles a magnificent steel bridge. Ogludon builds up static electricity and fires a powerful beam. Terminals at the end of its limbs gather and store a static electricity, which Ogludon can use to fire a powerful beam made up of electric energy not normally generated within its body. Gludon can gather static electricity more easily during storms and other inclement weather, allowing to, to fire its beams faster than usual. So whether or not its signature move Electroshot has anything to do with what weather's in a play, let's wait and see. With this electric type special move, Ogludon gathers vast quantities of energy and fires off a high voltage bolt of electricity. Under rainy conditions, Ogludon can immediately fire off this attack without having to spend time charging it up, which is very, very nice for this move. Two turn move, if it's raining, it will be a one turn move. Very powerful electric type attack. We also got some more information from this DLC trailer about the League Club here. So you train your Pokemon and battle as a member of the League Club. Trainers participating in the BB League, including the Elite Four, get together and train through Pokemon battles. You can also visit the club room to meet up with people you've encountered at the Blueberry Academy and deepen your bonds with them. The club room computer, you can use a computer in the club room to lend a hand to other clubs that need funding for their activities. If you donate Blueberry points, which is going to be a new kind of currency, I'm guessing that we're going to get, you may receive thank you gifts from the clubs you've donated to. For example, if you donate Blueberry points, points to the Blueberry Academy Art Club, you'll be able to redecorate the League Club room. So it's really cool that you're going to have features where you're going to have like customization to a room that's your League Club place in the Blueberry Academy. And by doing these extra outsized missions and things like that, you're going to be able to customize it also. A thing I'm sure a lot of you will probably enjoy doing, especially if you can use this facility online, invite other players into your club. And there's probably extra things that you're going to be able to kind of add to your room for customization by doing things online with other players and other clubs and things like that. So a pretty cool feature that we're seeing integrated. And on top of this, we're going to get special guests as well. During your time at the Blueberry Academy, you'll be able to invite familiar faces from Paldea region for a visit. When you invite a trainer over, you, you can talk to them and take photos together. If you defeat one of these trainers in battle, you'll also be able to trade Pokemon with them. You might just see a side of them you hadn't seen before. So this is a picture of one of the gym leaders from Paldea that you can invite back in. So presuming that you're going to be able to invite the gym leaders over to the Blueberry Academy and kind of rebattle them and unlock some other features that we haven't yet seen in the games, which might be quite cool to do. And it gives us a way to rebattle, I guess, the gym leaders once again. 
uh, where we've only had the chance to battle them once through Scarlet and Violet and after that second time through they're kind of locked out so you can't really go and battle them again but with the Blueberry Academy League it feels like these facilities are kind of unlocking maybe there's a battle factory facility you've got the Elite Four and then you've got the ability to battle the gym leaders once again and hopefully that's something that you can continually do rather than do once and then that's it locked out for the the rest of the game you know on top of all of this news as well we got two new paradox pokemon we got raging bolt and iron crown which are very cool pokemon and they kind of link up with the walk and wake and iron leaves pokemon continuing on the theme of those legendary trios we've got the prehistoric paradox form of raikou which is going to be raging bolt i got to admit I really love the design of Raging Ball. I think it looks amazing. Like, I know there's a lot of memes out there about it being a kind of Raikou, Girafferig, or Farigaraf kind of hybrid Pokemon, but I really do love the design of this, and I think it'll be a very, very strong Pokemon. We also got Iron Crown as well, which is going to be the future Paradox Pokemon of Cobalion, and you can see a bit more details here of it. Obviously, with that first DLC trailer, we didn't get the types confirmed for these new Pokemon. We did get some nice footage of them in the DLC trailers, though, but very very cool and i definitely prefer these to the first set of paradox pokemon mythical paradox pokemon that we had released as well so very excited to see these coming and i believe we're going to be able to discover these in the part two dlc so the indigo disc we did get a bit more information on these at that teaser at worlds we got their types confirmed we had iron crown it is going to be a psychic and steel type pokemon so similar to metagross and we also have raging bolt dragon and electric typing though very unique typing not many pokemon had this mega Ampharos, i believe had this typing so really cool typing to get and it does have a new signature move as well in raging bolts thunderclap which is a priority attack in electric move which is going to be a very strong attacking option for raging bolt as well so they were the two other new pokemon that we got revealed in the dlc trailers and on top of this we got some more information about terrapagos and its baby form and its bigger form so the baby form is its actual normal form that's the normal terrapagos but then when it does go into that bigger form that is actually its terrestrialization form so when it terrestrializes it goes from its normal baby form into the big turtle with the big shell on the back with all of those type symbols on its back so that is very nice to know have that confirmation of that they're not two separate pokemon they're not two evolutions of one pokemon they are the same pokemon just with a normal type form and then a terrestrialization form and once they terrestrialize they turn into that which is kind of unique for a legendary pokemon having the different Different forms a bit like um, Necrozma and then Ultra Necrozma in Pokemon Sun and Moon. And then the final thing we're going to talk about today is the big, big drop at the World Championships. At that closing ceremony, they announced a 19th Terra type, which is huge and I think really ties back to Terrapagos that we just touched upon with having a terrestrial form, which is specific terrestrial form, but the 19th terrestrial type which was confirmed at the world championship a 19th terror type has been discovered in the trailer as well you kind of see it flicking through all of the different types and then this new terrestrial symbol appears where pokemon can then turn into this new 19th terrestrial type a 19th terror type so very interesting i don't think this is going to be like a fixed typing like it's not going to be a brand new typing that we're going to see going forward in like gen 10 11 12 and so on and anything outside of the main series titles i think it's just going to be a 19th type that's tied to terrestrialization so it's going to be exclusive to terrestrialization at least that's what i'm kind of picking up on from the wording of this it doesn't appear to be brand new typing it's a terrestrialization type so we've got 18 types already through terrestrialization and we're going to have this new one that will appear which is just going to be pretty much i think exclusive to scarlet and violet and the dlcs for scarlet and violet when we come around to gen 10 this will probably no longer be a thing whether or not i don't know we'll see because terrapagos if it is directly tied to terrapagos this kind of effect might turn into its ability or might be its ability in future generations and i do feel like there's going to be some sort of item tied to being able to terrestrialize into this 19th terror type and there has to be a cost for it right like we see here in the depictions you've got something like backscalibur it is going to be accessible to as well and then in the trailer as well you can see as well that the 
Pokemon that is using this special 19th terrestrialization type is predominantly using normal type moves. So you presume it's going to be a different Pokemon to back Scalabar. So it is going to be accessible to pretty much every Pokemon, I would assume, going forward. Something about it seems very different from the 18 Terra types we've seen before, but much is yet unknown. What the truth behind this 19th Terra type? So yeah, we don't really know too much information about it, of course, but it has been confirmed. If it was to give my best guesses about this, I think it is going to give you the same type of attack bonus on every single type. Uh, you'll get double same type of attack bonus or stab bonus on the base typings that you've already got. So if you're something like Baxcalibur, that dragon and ice type, you'll get two times the same type of attack bonus like you do when you terrestrialize into an ice or a dragon type anyway and then you are either going to have one of two ways and i can't really make my mind up with how i think this is going to play out where you either have no weakness at all because each type is going to be available uh, and all the types kind of counteract each type so you're going to have no weakness all the weaknesses like the drawback for this terrestrialization because it is pretty powerful is it's going to be weak to everything that you get hit by so i i don't know i don't know how it's going to work i'm really intrigued to see how it goes but i could see them making this pretty broken as a mechanic because they're going to want people to use it right i think the drawback of having to hold an item so you can't really stack it with any other item like a focus sash or anything like that makes it a little bit more balanced so i could see an item being required to use this 19th terrestrialization type and maybe they do just have it have no weaknesses at all so you can't really be hit for super effective damage while you're hitting your opponent for stab damage with whatever choices you use on the Pokemon that you're terrestrializing into this 19th Terra type with. But who knows? I'd love to hear your opinions. Get down in the comment section below. Let me know what your theories are and how this 19th terrestrialization type will, will work. Obviously, we've got to wait a little while until we discover this new 19th Terra type because it will be in that part two of the DLCs, which I expect now that we've got the date for the Teal Mask in September. I think the Indigo Disc will probably be dropping around November time, around the 19th. That would make sense, uh, but we'll wait and see and hopefully we get some more news on that very soon. And the last thing to touch upon as well is I really did find this quite interesting that this was on the Pokemon website, an expanded story connecting back to the Paldea region. On top of your school's trip to Kitakami and your studies abroad at the Blueberry Academy, the story of the hidden treasures of Area Zero will tie back to Paldea region as well. So all coming back to Paldea and obviously Area Zero, which is the titles of both these DLC parts, one and two, the hidden treasures of Area Zero. And the nice, interesting thing that we did get after all of the Terrapagos kind of discovering it's normal to its terrestrialization form. And we had pictures of Heath's expedition going into Area Zero, which is very cool. The music of everything around that. And then the camera panning into Area Zero, which really takes us back to Area Zero. The whole title of these two DLC packs, which kind of indicates a big hint to once we've completed the stories in both the Teal Mask and Kitakami and the Blueberry Academy and the Indigo Disc, we will be coming back to Paldea to finish off the whole mystery around Area Zero. What happened with Heath and the expedition? What happened to the professors when they went down into Area Zero? And are there deeper floors as well that we can go down into any more Paradox Pokemon that we'll be able to access? Surely we're going to be getting anti Terrakian Paradox forms as well. We've had the Suicune, we've had Raikou confirmed now, and none of the pictures really line up with the pictures that were sketched in Heath's book. So you would assume that we're going to get a third one. Maybe we might get a combined one, an ultimate one of each kind of set of trio starters. Who knows? But it's very exciting. We've got a lot more information to come and hopefully we get some answers. In particular with these DLCs, which I'm sure we are, we'll get a few more things teased to us, I'm sure, in the Teal Mask. And then it'll get kind of unraveled fully, I would expect, in the Blueberry Academy, in the Indigo Disc when that does drop. And hopefully we get a confirmation date very soon on that second part of the DLCs. But it's not long, like we've said now, till we do get the Teal Mask. And also, just before we go as well, we did get some kind of sneak peek information on something that will be dropping next Tuesday, the 22nd of August. Uh, Sarah B. Joe and a bunch of other content creators at the World Championships over this past weekend got given these boxes with the date of the 22nd of the 8th on them. Inside was a traditional Japanese tea set, so hinting at maybe 
a uh, new regional fake Pokemon that will be getting revealed, but something will be dropping next Tuesday, and I expect it to be linked to the teal mask. Because of the mask descriptions and the art on the box, it seems like it's linked to that first DLC pack. But let me know what you think down in the comment section below of everything that we've covered today, what you're looking forward to, what you expect to see coming out over the next few weeks. I know this is a bit of a longer video today, but I've just got back from Yokohama, and I wanted to put out a bit of a catch-up video, a bit of a summary video on everything that we've seen dropped since last week with those two trailers that we've had for the Teal Mask and the Indigo Disc. I hope you found today's video useful. I look forward to jumping back into content and reading through all your comments over the next week or so. And thank you so much for tuning in, friends. Have a great rest of your day. We'll be back very soon with more content on the channel. Drop a like on the video, subscribe to stay up to date with all of our Pokemon content. And I'll see you all in another video very soon. So until then, friends, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.